My name is Deborah Kafori. I'm your Multnomah County Chair, and this is the Board of County Commissioners. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today at, or tonight, at this hearing on a proposed ordinance to end the sale of flavored tobacco and nicotine, pro nicotine products in Multnomah County. If the proposal passes, although we're not taking a vote tonight, tonight is just a public hearing, Multnomah County will amend county code to ban the sale of flavored tobacco and nicotine products effective January 1st, 2004. The ordinance will also remove outdated language related to minimum legal sales age and enforcement. I know that there are a lot of folks here tonight to testify, and if you do want to testify and you haven't signed up yet, please be sure to sign up at the front door. This is a hybrid meeting, which means that some of our guests will appear in person and some will appear virtually. Please forgive us in advance for any technical issues that will probably occur. For those who are presenting virtually, please mute your mic when you're not speaking, and when you present, make sure to unmute your mic and turn on your camera. And for all presenters, please state your name for the record before you speak. Marina, how many people do we have signed up so far? Uh, Madam Chair, we have 84 people signed up. Due to the uh, interest in this topic tonight and the number of people who sign up, we are limiting each person to two minutes. But if uh, you feel inclined to just state your support or opposition and you don't need to be lengthy, we will also all greatly appreciate that. Um, we ask that attendees refrain from applauding after each testimony, but you can show your appreciation by waving your fingers or smiling real big. And if you decide, after you've sat here for several hours, that you would rather submit your testimony in writing, you can email it to boardclerk, one word, at multco.us. We do have interpretation services with us here tonight in Spanish, Korean, Cantonese, and Vietnamese. And if you're signed up to testify and you need your testimony interpreted, please write the language that you need on the top of your sign-up form. Interpreters, I'm gonna call your name. Please introduce yourself in the language that you are able to interpret. Sandra for Spanish. For the people who are online and might be listening in and don't speak English, can you, do you, can you come up to the front and, and give the message? Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Joana. Si usted planea dar su testimonio en español, estoy aquí para interpretar su testimonio por usted al inglés. Por favor, asegúrese de escribir el lenguaje en el que hablará en la parte superior en la, del formulario de registración. Cuando sea su turno de testificar, me reuniré con usted en la mesa de presentadores. Por favor, recuerde de pausar después de un par de oraciones para yo interpretar lo que está diciendo. Si va a testificar virtualmente, yo interpretaré por usted de la mesa. Gracias. Thank you. Jin He Lee, are you here? Would you, thank you. Could you come up and read your script? 안녕하세요. 제 이름은 이진희입니다. 제가 오늘 여러분 인터프리 통역을 하러 여기 왔습니다. 제가 음, 오늘 만약에 앞에서 어, 증언을 하시길 원하시면 은 뒤에 있는 사인업 폼에다가 어, 한국말이라고 적어주시면 됩니다. 그리고 말씀하실 차례가 되면 은 제가 여기 테이블에서 여러분 말씀하신 것을 통역해 드리겠습니다. 어, 증언하실 때 먼저 이름을 먼저 말씀하시고 어떤 분이 본인의 이름을 말씀하시고 각 문장마다 어, 좀 쉼을 주셔서 제가 번역할 시간을 주시고요. 그 다음에 마지막으로 어, 화상으로 증언하시길 원하시면 은 제가 이 테이블에서 어, 통역을 해드리겠습니다. 그 다음에 또한 어, 화상으로 통역하실 때는 마이크는 꺼주시고 미디어는 언해 주시면 됩니다. 그리고 또 이메일로도 어, 증언할 수 있으니까 그것도 알아두시고요. 감사합니다. Thank you. Ken Ma or Vivian Deng for Cantonese? Just one of you is fine. We don't need, we don't need both of you up. Thanks. Vivian Sergeant. 
。如果你打算用粵語講你嘅正詞，我會喺呢度將你嘅正詞翻譯成英文。當輪到你作證嘅時候，我會同你一齊上呢個陳述台。請確認喺你嘅登記表寫低你會講嘅語言。當你發言嘅時候，請記得會講幾句話，要作一個停頓，以便我幫你翻譯。如果你要網上作證嘅話，我會喺網上、啊、我會喺台上直接幫你翻譯。多謝合作。Thank you.、Uh, Tommy Nguyen and or D. Nolan for Vietnamese. I'm a Vietnamese. Thank you. Please come up. Xin chào mọi người, tôi tên là Thông Nguyễn. Nếu quý vị có ý định đưa ra lời khai bằng tiếng Việt, tôi đến đây để dịch lời khai của quý vị thành tiếng Anh. Hãy vui lòng viết xuống ngôn ngữ mà quý vị sẽ thuyết trình trên đầu trang giấy đăng ký. Khi tới lượt quý vị đưa ra đề khai, tôi sẽ tham gia với quý vị kế bên bàn người thuyết trình. Xin quý vị vui lòng tạm ngưng sau vài câu để tôi có thể dịch cho quý vị. Nếu quý vị đưa ra lời khai qua trực tuyến, tôi sẽ dịch cho quý vị tại bàn. Cảm ơn. Thank you. Before we get started, I want to note that the board is scheduled to have the first reading of this ordinance on this Thursday, December the 1st, during our regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, which begins at 9.30 a.m. And just for announcements, in the restrooms are located out in the hallway before you get to the exit, and the parking garage across the street is open tonight until 9 o'clock, at, at which point the doors close. So um, we will hope to be done before then. And Marina, will you please, so we're gonna intersperse the folks online with the folks in the audience. We do have more people who signed up to speak virtually, so we're gonna start with, with those names. Marina? Um, okay, so I moved those people over into presenters, and we have Dave uh, Nessler, uh, Nesslercrass, Rachel Banks, and uh, Richard Marianos, and Charlie Moses. Um, Dave, you're welcome to begin. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent, thanks. So uh, good evening, uh, members of the Multnomah County Board of Commissioners. My name is Dave nestler Cass, and I'm a Multnomah County resident. I'm also a father of three and a volunteer board member with the American Cancer Society. Cancer has been, has had a big impact on my life as both my brother and my mother died too young to cancer. That's why I'm here today urging your full support of the proposal to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. I am deeply concerned about the impact of these flavored tobacco products on young people in our community. As a father of three, I know the pressures they are under to fit in and these products are so explicitly targeted to appeal to, ch to children like mine. No 12 year old will pick up a Marlboro cigarette unprompted but something that is flavored like gummy bears, fruit punch, or cookies is very tempting to try and much easier to turn into a habit. My kids tell me how common it is for teens to use tobacco, even at school. It is frustrating to see tobacco make such a comeback after seeing it fall in popularity for many years. This is a crisis and the time for action is now. Prevention is the greatest tool we have in the fight against cancer. By preventing a new generation of people from getting addicted to tobacco products, we can save thousands of families from suffering. Please vote to remove all flavors of flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County, all flavors and all products in all locations. And that concludes my testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Banks, you may go next. Great, thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Well, hi, good afternoon, Chair, or evening, I guess, Chair Kafori and Commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Rachel Banks, Public Health Director at Oregon Health Authority. It is my absolute pleasure to be here testifying uh, with you all. At the Oregon Health Authority, we are committed to caring for our state and protecting people from health harms and by eliminating health inequities by 2030. We do this by connecting evidence-based strategy to live experience, by listening to the realities of those experiencing health inequities, and by working to address the root causes of health inequities. The Multnomah County proposal to end the sale of all flavored tobacco and nicotine products in all places does just this by working towards a nicotine-free generation. Restricting all flavored tobacco products simply protects youth. There is a youth cigarette epidemic 
an epidemic that's been manufactured by tobacco industry flavors that appeal to youth through packaging, design, and masking the harsh taste and feel of tobacco. Flavored products are a key driver of the steep increase in e-cigarette use by teens. Nearly 90% of people who smoke begin by age 18. Nationally, fruit, dessert, and other similarly flavored product sales grew by 236% between 2015 and 2018. Among those who use tobacco in Oregon, 78% of youth chose a flavored product compared to just 22% of adults who are 25 and older. Flavored nicotine products are dangerous. With more than 15,000 e-cigarette flavors on the market, candied flavor tobacco products are available in nine out of every 10 tobacco retail stores in Oregon. In a recent survey of youth and young adults, two thirds of those who used e-cigarettes didn't know the product contained nicotine. Flavors, including menthol, make it easier for youth to start using tobacco products, and addictive nicotine makes it harder to stop. Addressing flavored tobacco products is an evidence-based strategy to reduce the youth vaping epidemic and improve health. Restricting all flavored tobacco products supports health equity. While Oregon has made great strides... Sorry, Rachel, reducing- your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next... Uh, Richard, uh, do you want to go next? I'd be honored to. Good evening, uh, members of the committee. My name is Richard Marianos. I'm a retired assistant director with ATF. Um, also, I'm a professor at Georgetown University and a member of the International Chiefs of Police. Um, I'm going to take on a little bit different angle because what I'm seeing and what I've seen around the nation is the problem when you ban these flavored products. Uh, some of the negative unintended consequences. The first one is it directly affects tobacco harm reduction. It's an adult product. You take this out of the mainstream, you take it out of the marketplace, and the people that are smoking, it's difficult for them to stop or wean themselves off, and it creates a different harm by it's out of the commerce and it's on the street. And the kids and the adults have to buy it from street corners and criminals who are making money in the illicit market selling these products. Second, it's the antithesis of police reform. If you ban these products, cops, sheriffs, and law enforcement are going to have to tackle the problem on its lowest level with ordinances, misdemeanors, and silly offenses that are going to take the police away from their biggest problem right now is going out and serving and protecting when crime is one of the biggest concerns in the nation from every voting population in America. Second, it creates crime. That by banning this in your county, you're going to create a, an illegal, illicit illegal market in which individuals will go along the I-5 corridor into places like Salem, Eugene, to buy their products and bring it into the city through criminal means. And it, again, it will cause more dysfunction between the community and the police, which is something we're so endearing trying to fix since 2020. The revenue that will be given to the other areas and will be taken out of the county's budget will only hurt. It can't help. And I respect some of the statements that were made prior, but we have to look at who the people are that are selling gummy bears and all these silly flavors to the kids. It's the criminal industry. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I'm available for any questions. Charlie Moses, you may go next. Cool, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I'm a harm reductionist and I've also uh, worked with narcotics officers on the Arizona and uh, Mexico borders and I would argue um, pretty severely with uh, the person who just spoke. Um, So I'm gonna get into it and I'm just gonna rip. Um, So I grew up here in Multnomah County. I went to David Douglas School District in East County, Portland from kindergarten and then I dropped out my junior year of high school Now I'm getting my doctorate in public health uh, to address the substance use issues that literally wreaked havoc on my life and on the life of my family, my friends, my community. This is what spurred me to fight back against the tobacco industry and what targets low income marginalized communities. It's also motivated me to align myself with groups and organizations that prioritize people's lives and well-being. Uh, I watched the tobacco industry and tobacco itself absolutely decimate my grandfather. 
And I watched how this affected every single person in my family. I watched my friends, my siblings, my cousins, my loved ones, and my partners all pick up and try and quit smoking after being targeted when we were all still in elementary school. For me, it was in the fifth grade. Um, and then pick up and try and quit vaping when we were all targeted in our early 20s, right when Jewel hit. Um, my last partner was using menthol-flavored vapes to try and quit smoking and then was suffering these terrifying severe asthma attacks and these nosebleeds where we'd wake up in our bed sheets just soaked in blood. Um, so to me, it's very painstakingly clear that big tobacco is targeting youth once again, using products that don't yet have regulation to the great advantage. Big tobacco is literally having a heyday right now, and my loved ones in my community are at the mercy of this. Targeted social media campaigns, um, literal paid advertisements on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. Like it's the year 2022, what are we all doing? Again and again, it seems like we place profit over people in this familiar short-term game where we're not thinking about the effects that nicotine has on our long-term health. So we're spending literally $1 million a day addressing the health issues caused by nicotine and tobacco products. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, my grandpa's death wasn't a quick death. Uh, it was a long, incredibly painful, brutal death that required a lot of resources. And I don't want to see my siblings or my cousins or my parents or friends or anybody in my community. Time is up. My grandfather had. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have in person, we have Sydney Lemon, Rachel uh, Christian, Joshua Bergman, and Salome Chimuku. Did you all sign it? Did they sign up together? I have uh, Sydney, Rachel, and Joshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Where, where would you like to speak? Right here. Oh, just up here. Thank you. Um, yeah. You have to sit down. Have Sorry. To sit, down. Yeah. Have sit down and speak it clearly into the microphone so that the people who are watching online and so that um, we have it uh, okay. Okay. for our, we videotape it for people to listen to a later date. And just state your name. You don't need to say your address or anything. Just okay, state your no, name. No, for sure. Um, and just to let you know, I, I was un unaware of exactly how this meeting was going to proceed, so I kind of um, prepared my speech to talk to the audience behind me, but I'll yeah. talk. Just when you go out, you know, this woman came after me after I got done speaking. But it, Sorry, who's speaking? I, I don't, somebody must have been on the internet. Um, yeah, you, you speak to us. It's our, it's our hearing, so oh, okay. and so you have two minutes. Be our audience. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I was told we could have two minutes apiece. We'll be under six minutes. Great. Okay. Hi, I'm Josh. Um, I'm a local business owner with two retail stores here in Portland for over 10 years. We sell vapes, but that's not our main focus. Only a small percentage of sales is derived from them. I'm here today because I enjoy vaping uh, fruit-flavored e-cigarettes instead of disgusting tobacco cigarettes, which I believe is one of my rights living in this country. Um, I'd like to do a quick group survey with a little bit of group participation. Um, but first, I wanted to bring up a quick news article that was somewhat concerning pertaining to our industry. Um, this morning, KGW was speaking about a Portland man um, here uh, um, in town who got fired from an orange juice company, apparently he, just because he couldn't concentrate. Okay. I have, um, we're gonna do a group survey with all you guys, I like a little bit of group participation. All I need is a hand up or not a hand down at all. Or, or not, it's, there's not group participation. It's just a hearing for us to okay. listen to you. Okay. There's we'll not still continue, We'll still continue with the speech. Thank you. All right. Um, Rachel, can you please hold up our first item? Sydney, our second. Hold it up high. The oranges, pineapples. What's the other one you have, Sydney? Bananas. All right. I would assume, without everybody raising their hand, that the majority of this room enjoys fruit, and 100% of this room are grown adults. Now, what about the kids? According to CDC, only 7% are consuming their daily intake of fruits. Let's take a look at some other recreational drugs and alcohol that are intended to be only marketed to adults 21 and over. Flavored liquor. Flavored beer with, with marketing and signs point to, towards kids. Right. Flavored cannabis. We have four more minutes. Fruit flavored marketed apparently towards kids. Okay. According to the latest youth risk behavior survey, 29% of all high school age students have drank alcohol in the last year. 
And we know alcohol, especially in youth, lead to a list of problems, including depression, anxiety, sexual abuse, death. There are 3,900 deaths annually resulting from drinking, minors drinking alone. This being, su this being such a critical issue, what percentage does everyone think use are vaping? Must be significantly more than drugs and alcohol, right? Not correct. CDC says only 14% of youths have tried vaping, and that survey was taken just last month. If alcohol and drugs are legitimately the cause of minor shortfalls and we're not attempting to ban large tobacco, and by large tobacco I don't mean fruit flavored tobaccos, I mean Marlboro, I'm talking about uh, c c cigarettes that we know kill people, why have we made an all out attack on only fruit flavored vapes? We're talking about cancer and banning big tobacco, but we're here today for fruit flavored vapes, not for tobacco in general. Why not beer? Why not liquor? Why not cannabis flavored products? This appears to be singling out only a select and specific tobacco alternative product that hasn't proven scientifically harmful like tobacco and cigarettes. Minors have always obtained drugs and alcohol with ease. Banning flavored vapes in one county or state will not prevent them from continuing. They will still purchase from other counties or even easier online. The as someone previously said, we also know that black market unregulated drugs and alcohol have other health risks associated with it. I know myself and my customers will continue to vape um, regardless of the outcome of the decision from this meeting, whether it's black market or regulated here in, in Portland. Don't we seriously have more urgent issues in Portland to worry about than fruit flavored vapes? Seems like this measure. I'm, I'm not joking when I say there's no clapping. Keep Don't going. Are we serious? I have two more minutes. I'll be done in 30 seconds. Don't we, maybe one minute. Don't we seriously have more urgent issues in Portland to worry about than fruit flavored vapes? Seems like this measure passes. The only one that is winning is tobacco big company. Okay. Last thing I want to say that was not on my speech. I grew up here in Portland uh, with two parents. My mom was a Spanish teacher at PCC. My dad owned his own small communications business. Um, I, with one brother five years younger than me. Um, my, my parents were good parents, you know, they, they tried to raise up uh, properly, got with good guidance. My brother never tried drugs, alcohol. He's at uh, West Point over in New York um, in straight and narrow. Myself, I experimented with everything when I was a kid. You know, I tried drugs and alcohol. I also went to PSU and graduated with a bachelor's in supply and logistics and own my own small business now. I don't believe regulations and controlling kids will make them do the correct decisions. I, I feel like, and I feel a lot of people here have seen, the more we try to control kids, the more they rebel and don't listen. So thank you for everybody's time. I appreciate it. Um, we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have online, we have uh, Haley Hodges, Dr. Cynthia McPhee, and uh, Gregory Blaschke. Uh, Haley, you may begin. Good evening, County Commissioners. Uh, my name is Haley Hodges, and I am representing the National Association of Tobacco Outlets in our hundreds of retailer stores in Multnomah. Ordinances such as flavor and vapor bans are detrimental to small business retailers like the ones throughout Multnomah County. These bans threaten the revenue stream that small businesses rely on to stay open and threaten job security for employees of these stores. If you ask a retailer in any city or county with a flavor ban in place how their business has been impacted, they will tell you how devastating it has been for them. If passed, the ordinance will force small businesses to further increase the price of goods such as groceries and gas to make up for the loss of sales they will face if this ban is implemented or they will have to close. This ban will have unintended consequences and will hurt adult consumers who are already facing record level inflation. Youth are not buying tobacco and vape products from licensed retailers such as the ones in Multnomah. These stores have procedures in place to verify their customer's age as consistently reflected in FDA and CDC data. 86 to 90 percent of the time, whether it's vapor products or cigarettes, youth are obtaining these products through social sources, older friends, family members, through un an unregulated online marketplace. And youth are now even buying vape products off of TikTok. And the products that they're receiving online are unregulated and dangerous products from foreign countries which have no federal oversight, such as those products still on shelves approved by the FDA, making them much more harmful and much more dangerous. Banning the sale of flavored tobacco products will absolutely contribute to a boost to the illicit market 
and invite unregulated products to be sold in Multnomah. Prohibiting legal age adults from buying these products in Multnomah will also hurt the local economy and will drive businesses to the surrounding counties, meaning a loss of tax revenue for Multnomah. Flavored tobacco bans do not work. San Francisco, California was the first city to implement a flavored tobacco ban in the state of California. And a couple of years after its implementation, a study was conducted Time is by up. Yale University. Thank you. If you don't finish your testimony, you can always submit it online. Um, next we have Gregory. Good evening, uh, Multnomah County Commissioners. For the record, my name is uh, Greg Blaschke. I'm a general pediatrician at OHSU. I'm here this evening in support of a comprehensive favor flavored tobacco restriction policy in our county. Before I joined OHSU, I spent 22 years in Navy pediatrics, serving the children of service members. Tobacco use was prevalent in many Navy households, and I saw the health impacts this had on children I cared for by a second and third hand smoke um, from their parents. Personally, I watched my parents struggle with COPD and lung cancer. I know uh, we know tobacco uh, impacts people of all ages and in a myriad of ways, whether one experiences the direct impacts of smoking themselves or those who suffer from secondhand smoke exposure. This is why I support restricting the sale of all flavored tobacco products, including mint and menthol in all locations, because once you start smoking, it is so hard to quit. Among middle and high school students who use e-cigarettes, 97% report using flavored products. Flavors make tobacco products seem harmless. Menthol soothes, soothes the burning sensation. Many of us equate with the first ill-fated use of tobacco. And the newest generation of tobacco products are just as nefarious as their historical counterpart. With flavors like gummy bears, Skittles, and strawberry, it's no wonder our teens are smoking e-cigarettes more than ever before. And even though e-cigarettes are often marketed as less harmful alternative to traditional cigarettes, there's really no proof to back up those claims. Before the pandemic, the FDA reported an uptick in seizures and youth with e-cigarette users from regular usage, in addition to the previously known effect of nicotine toxicity reported in cases of intentional or accidental swallowing of e-liquid. Time is up. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Um, next we have uh, Dr. McPhee. Good evening, Chair Kafori and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Cynthia McPhee. I'm a pediatrician with Kaiser Permanente. Um, I'm here today on behalf of Kaiser Permanente to urge you to take action to end the sale of flavored tobacco products in our county without delay. Um, it is vital to end the sale of flavored tobacco products without any exceptions or exemptions. Menthol, hookah, and e-cigarettes have devastating health impacts on the entire community and especially our communities of color. Um, I've been a pediatrician for uh, 21 years now and certainly have seen a dramatic increase in the number of kids who are um, vaping and using flavored tobacco products. Um, we have a, a questionnaire that we give to all of our patients when they come in for a, a well child check um, starting at age 12. And I'm seeing 12 and 13 and 14 year olds as well as older teens who are uh, saying that they're, they are either using flavored tobacco, tobacco products or they have friends who are using. Um, the majority of kids uh, mark yet yes on that box. Um, the kids are, um, uh, hooked by the um, the flavors that are um, uh, marketed to their to their youth um, and then once they start using the nicotine in the products um, gets them addicted um, that makes them more likely to uh, end up being cigarette smokers in the in the future um, but we know that the vape products can also be dangerous for our uh, our youth um, this um, 
this is is impacting you know not only our um teenagers but our, our young up. children as well thank you thank you chris hudgens you're next Hi, uh, thank you, commissioners. Appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you tonight. I'm Chris Hudgens. I'm with the National Hookah Community Association. Uh, I also work for uh, a company called Air, which uh, is a producer of, of, of hookah tobacco. Um, our, our association represents the entire community, producers such as me, as well as uh, lounges, us users, distributors, retailers, so really everybody in the supply chain of, of hookah. Uh, and I, I want to speak to you tonight about hookah. Um, something pretty monumental happened several weeks ago. The voters of um, California overwhelmingly approved a statewide ban on flavored tobacco, and they overwhelmingly approved an exemption for hookah in that statewide ban for flavored tobacco. And the reason they did that, uh, this words from, from Go Governor uh, Newsom when he signed the bill into law, was that uh, hookah, hookah is not, an, an, not the problem in schools. Hookah is not a problem for youth. And... Um, we're glad that the legislature, the governor, and the voters of California recognize that. We ask you to do the same. Hookah is an important cultural practice for folks from the Middle East, India, and surrounding areas. It does not, uh, is not readily available to youth, uh, and it has very low youth r usage rates uh, from the CDC and FDA's annual survey. Uh, the amount of uh, adolescents who have used hookah in the past 30 days is less than 1%, and that's 10 times less than vape. So we ask you that you recognize both the cultural importance to, of this product uh, and the practice of this product, which has been used for hundreds of years, the fact that it's only 15 to 20 percent tobacco, uh, and, and also the fact that all tobacco, uh, excuse me, has, has been the practice for hundreds of years, all hookah is flavored. So this ordinance would completely ban hookah uh, in the county uh, that would shut down uh, the hookah lounges there as, as well, but would still allow cigarettes and and, um, and, and tobacco vapes to be sold, but all hookah would, would disappear. So we ask that you um, recognize these arguments as, as the voters overwhelmingly did in California and exempt hookah. Time is up. Thank you. Next we have in person, Jonathan Polanski, Emily Souls, Richard Burke, and Sophia Kogan. Please come forward. You can go first. Thank you. Uh, Chair Kifori, members of the commission, for the record, my name is Emily Souls here today representing the Oregon Small Business Association and the Oregon Vapor Trade Association. In 2020, voters approved a 65% tax increase on nicotine-containing products. The steep price increase was listed as one of the key factors in keeping nicotine products away from teens. In 2021, the Oregon legislature passed a statewide tobacco licensing program and a ban on online sales of nicotine-containing products to keep these products away from teens. This is on top of raising the legal age for these products to age of 21. While we've decriminalized user quantities of hard drugs and are struggling to keep our community safe, we're here today debating the use of menthol and blue raspberry flavors in legal, licensed, adult-only consumer products. According to Tobacco Free Kids data sheet published on 10-11-22, Oregon is leading the nation with tobacco prevention spending of 93.3% of the CDC target. The data also indicates that Oregon's youth smoking rate at 2.9% is the seventh lowest in the country. Oregon has taken aggressive measures to protect our youth, and it's working. There are many reasons why a flavor ban is bad for Multnomah County. It closes small business, loss of jobs, loss of taxes, black market sales, unre unregulated do-it-yourself concoctions, decreased revenue for tobacco cessation efforts and programs, driving sales to other counties, and taking the choice away from legal adult consumers. But the number one reason the, uh, that this is bad, the proposed flavor ban is ineffective. The problem isn't flavors. The problem is weak enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Chair Kifori, Commission members, my name is Jonathan Polanski. Uh, I'm the CEO for Plaid Pantry. Uh, we own and operate 106 convenience stores. 59 of those are in Multnomah County, and we employ uh, roughly 700 Oregonians. 
tobacco products just like beer, wine, and spirits are adult products that are legal to sell in Oregon. Manufacturers produce all of these products in a wide variety of flavors because consumers expect to have a choice. The graphs I have brought today are also included in my written testimony and are posted on the Oregon Health Authority's website. Exhibit A clearly shows a dramatic decline in the use of electronic and combustible cigarettes by youth. And Exhibit B proves the point that the vast majority of the time, young people are not getting tobacco products from retailers, but from other social sources. The dramatic reduction of youth tobacco is no doubt due to recent increases in minimum age restrictions, huge tax increases, and education. There are better alternatives to a total flavor ban. These could include mandatory age verification equipment, requiring age verification of every single customer, as Plaid does now, and maintaining the minor in possession language that is currently in the ordinance. It is not equitable to take a privilege of selling legal products away from those that sell it responsibly. Banning flavored tobacco in a single county will not have much of an impact. It will simply make it inconvenient for adult consumers and hurt law-abiding businesses. Please don't press the easy button by banning all flavors. Instead, focus on those measures that keep tobacco out of the hands of kids. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Chair Kafori, members of the commission. My name is Richard Burke. I'm the executive director of the 21 Plus Tobacco and Vapor Retail Association of Oregon. Um, our members are uh, the ones who fought the executive order by Governor Brown to ban these vapors in court. Our members are also the ones who fought the Washington County ban in court. Um, if this passes in its current form, we will fight this vigorously as well. We have a lot of the common goals, so I don't think a fight necessarily needs to happen. We want to do our best to ensure that youth cannot get access to these things. I agree with what Mr. Polanski said about alternatives to make sure that minors do not have access uh, to these uh, products. Um, there could be carve-outs for flavors for 21 plus stores or menthol for those who allow people under 21 in the stores um, that can uh, uh, do this. But if, it, if this is about kids, you're not gonna go after 21 plus stores because they're not even allowed on property. And there are many things that could be done uh, as well. And there's been a lot of mention of black markets. If I were a killer or a social predator, I would love you guys for passing this. This is going to put tons of money into the hands of killers and social predators. And it's gonna result in more dangerous products. It's gonna result in more kids getting, getting killed. And none of this is gonna be good for any of us. Our law enforcement is already taxed. We already have security problems in the area. We don't need to lob more on top of them. And also there's been some talk about racial equity. This is not going to result in racial equity. If, if you notice, many of the 21 plus stores are owned by members of the minority community. They have people who work for them who are in the minority community. And since 85% uh, uh, of black people prefer menthols, 30% of white people prefer menthols. How is it fair that white people can smoke the products they want to smoke, but black people can't smoke the products they want to smoke when the CDC says they're no more dangerous than the other? Thank you. There are things we can do other than this ban. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Good evening, Chief Kafuri and Commissioners. My name is Sophia Kogan. I'm a recent 2019 high school graduate and a current senior at Portland State University studying biology and public health studies. As an undergraduate student, I've worked with the American Cancer Society where I assess cancer rates in Oregon and I, volu and I volunteer in oncology infusion. I'm also a leader of the PSU and OHSU Initiative for Health Improvement Open School Chapter. Please vote to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. I graduated from high school in 2019. At that time, e-cigarette usage was already bad. I have heard directly that it has gotten so much worse since I left. The pandemic seems to have made the problem of young people using e-cigarettes far more prevalent than before. This is scary because all the science clearly tells us, that, tells us that these are not a healthy alternative to cigarettes or simply harmless water vapors. High schools in Portland are having to remove the doors from bathroom stalls to discourage teenagers from vaping between classes. Some of my classmates would even use their e-cigarettes right in the classroom. 
One single e-cigarette can have exponentially more nicotine in it than an entire pack of cigarettes. Teenagers are causing physical damage to their brains with this much nicotine. There are so many people my age and younger, including middle schoolers, who are now caught in addiction to nicotine. Nicotine is one of the most addictive drugs in the world, and my fellow classmates are going to have a serious endeavor to try and quit their addiction. If it had not been for these flavored products, I do not know of anyone who would have ever started using this e-cigarette at this young age. Flavored tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, are explicitly targeted at young people. Almost no adults are purchasing e-cigarettes that are flavored like fruit punch, churros, or gummy bears, but almost all young people who smoke do. By removing these products, you can prevent a new generation of smokers. Please finish the work you began in 2019 and end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have online presenters, uh, Valerie Illustre, Sheila LaPlante, Caitlin Diefendorf, and Rima Corey. Valerie, would you like to begin, please? Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, being allowed to come here to speak tonight. Uh, as an educator for many decades, I am against the ban. I view substance use as a symptom of societal dysfunction. We need to educate resilient children who can resist substance use. However, I did not come here mainly to speak about that. Uh, I think that the money that would be spent on enforcing this ban would be better spent uh, in a um, ban of a different kind. Every year, there is a much more pervasive hazard than tobacco that affects everyone, not just those citizens who choose to smoke tobacco. We are not being protected by our government from the deleterious effects of wood smoke, and we have no choice in the matter at all. Once the microparticulates produced by wood smoke damage your lungs, there is no recovery, as there is if one stops smoking tobacco. Your ability to breathe efficiently has been reduced along with oxygen flow to your brain. There is no action any of the citizens of Portland can take on their own to avoid these effects. Only a total ban on burning wood within the county can help us. The smoke from one fireplace burning for six hours is roughly equivalent to the smoke from a million cigarettes. It will take courage for this body to go against cultural norms and ban wood smoke, but it is the right thing to do. This holiday season would be a good time for people to see billboards announcing a powerful new public relations campaign, one that contrasts the cozy picture of Santa in front of a roaring fire drinking Coke with the truth about what fireplaces actually produce, a picture of a toddler on a ventilator, and a picture of an elderly person on oxygen in an ICU. Perhaps the billboard could have a digital counter that would show people the number of emergency room visits Time is up. each winter. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, you may go next. Sheila, are you there? Um, Caitlin, would you like to go next? Yeah, I can go next. Thank you. Um, my name is Caitlin Diefendorf. I'm a resident of Multnomah County. I'm a third year medical student at Oregon Health and Science University, and I'm a member of the Oregon Pediatric Society and a future pediatrician. As a student doctor and future healthcare provider for children and adolescents, I am in alliance with the Oregon Pediatric Society in strongly supporting the proposal to restrict the sale of all flavored tobacco and nicotine products in all locations in Oregon. In 2019, the American Academy of Pediatrics issued a report stating that electronic cigarettes were the most used tobacco product among youth. Children and adolescents who use e-cigarettes are 3.6 times more likely to later use traditional cigarettes. As well, candy fruit flavors are marketed to attract youth. A 2016 report from the U.S. General Surgeon further stated that electronic cigarettes are unsafe for children and adolescents. In 2019, the American Academy of Pediatrics explicitly recommended that public policy adopt laws that reduce youth demand for electronic cigarettes through ban of all characterizing flavors, including menthol. Additionally, as pediatric providers, it is recommended that we screen for and provide prevention counseling for patients and families about the negative health concerns related to electronic cigarettes. 
So in summary, I believe the next best step in a collaborative effort between lawmakers and healthcare providers in protecting our youth um, of Multnomah County from a lifetime of nicotine addiction and negative health outcomes is passing legislature that will restrict the sale of harmful flavored tobacco products. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rima, you may go next. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Rima Corey. I'm general counsel for Fumari, which is a premium hookah tobacco manufacturer. I'm also one of the founding members of the National Hookah Community Association, which was established to protect and preserve um, the rich cultural tradition of hookah. So before you ban a nearly thousand year cultural tradition uh, practiced by Middle Easterners, Armenians, Turks, Indians, North Africans, and Persians, Please understand the facts. Buka tobacco only comes in flavors. In fact, it's called musal in Arabic, which literally translates to with honey. Um, it has been made for hundreds of years with molasses and honey, and sometimes um, dried up fruit would be added. And this has ha literally been the case for hundreds of years. Therefore, a flavor ban is a hookah ban. And if protecting kids is the purpose of this legislation, then that would not be achieved by banning hookah because kids do not use hookah. According to the CDC, approximately 1% of high schoolers use hookah tobacco products versus 10% that use vape. And that's 1% has been going down over the past decade. According to the FDA, although they see a correlation between flavors and youth initiation, they do not see the same correlation with hookah. And there's reasons why. A hookah, if you've ever seen one, is three feet tall. It's very difficult to conceal in your backpack or a pocket. It takes about 20 minutes to set up. Um, hookahs have about 10 parts and components, and they cost over $200. I'm Palestinian American. I have a hookah, and it's over $700. It's a beautiful art piece, very ornate. So it's very cost prohibitive. And hookahs are just not being confiscated in schools. I mean, just ask. It's simply not an issue. There is no teen hookah epidemic. And that is why the state of California exempted hookah from the statewide flavored tobacco ban. Time is up. And that was just voted on. Thank you. Please exempt hookah. Thank you. Uh, Sheila, are you available to testify? You are unmuted. Hello, Sheila. Uh, I can't get Sheila. I guess I'll go on to in person. Um, Elizabeth Edwards, Mike Hannon, Ben Hoffman, and Nick Brednicki. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good Welcome. evening. Uh, Chair Kafori, members of the commission, for the record, my name is Elizabeth Edwards. I use she, her pronouns. I am the government relations director for Kaiser Permanente Northwest. But this evening, I am here rec uh, representing not just Kaiser Permanente, but also other major health systems around the region, including Providence, Legacy, OHSU, and HealthShare of Oregon. Together, we employ over 63,000 people dedicated to keeping Oregonians healthy. We've submitted written testimony, so I'll keep my remarks brief, but to put it simply, we urge you to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products, including menthol, hookah, and e-cigarettes. Tobacco use is still the leading cause of death and disease in Oregon. Reducing tobacco use requires a multifaceted approach, starting with preventing youth and young adults from getting hooked on tobacco products and also eliminating tobacco-related health disparities in all populations. To be effective, the county's restriction on flavored tobacco sales must apply to all products in all settings without exception or exemption. I'd also like to direct your attention to a letter from Kaiser Permanente's Chief uh, Health Officer, Dr. Bashara Choker, who speaks directly to the claims around hookah and cultural practice. With all that said, I'll close my comments by expressing my deep gratitude to all of you 
for being public health leaders and for your partnership in this space. We stand ready as health systems to support you with a strong and comprehensive policy um, that will help save lives going into the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Kafori and um, Multnomah County Commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Nick Bradnicki. Uh, I am a Multnomah County resident here this evening to urge your support of a comprehensive flavor restriction policy with no exemptions or carve-outs. You know, I'm a North Portland resident and I take the 35 bus uh, to work most days of the week and I stand at my bus stop and I am surrounded by flavored uh, vaping products from every age you can imagine. The kids going to school, the adults going to work, some older folks too. And there's just, there's no science to prove that that's a good idea in any way, shape or form. And I got to imagine why, why is a kid sitting there at the bus stop smoking something flavored, something that has a really fun name to it. And it, it makes me think back to my dad. Um, you know, my dad got hooked on smoking uh, menthol cigarettes. And you know, you, you've all had, uh, I, I don't know if they're still with you today, but you've all had parental figures or caregivers in your lives, and I wish my dad was with me today. He's not, because he could not stop smoking flavored tobacco products. And we all know that the reason you, don't, you cannot stop is because of the nicotine in these, right? It hooks everybody, especially when you're younger. It changes the chemistry of your brain. Uh, you might not be able to control what happens online, black markets from third parties, but you can control what happens in this county, in our community. And you can ban the flavor, uh, the sale of flavored tobacco products full stop uh, with no restrictions uh, and no exemptions um, to help everybody, including our youth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Chair Kafori, members of the commission. My name is Ben Hoffman. I'm a professor of pediatrics at OHSU Dornbecker Children's Hospital, the medical director of our child injury prevention program, and the director of the Oregon Center for Children and Youth with Special Health Needs. And I'm here on behalf of OHSU to support restricting all flavored tobacco nicotine products in all, pl uh, in, in all products and in all places. Banana split, blueberry cake, cotton candy, Kool-Aid, sweet tarts, Hawaiian punch, Fruit Loops, Skittles. Curious George, Papa Smurf. All products are characters designed to appeal to kids and market directly to them. It is no coincidence that they are also the names of flavored vape liquid. I'm not gonna repeat statistics, we've heard a lot of them, but simply put, our country's children are being hooked on a highly addictive product that puts their health at risk, orchestrated by an industry that has to date evaded effective regulation. We've heard that almost all young users begin with a flavored nicotine product. And we know as pediatricians that the teen brain is particularly vulnerable. And while high schoolers may look like adults, they simply are not. Brain development, especially in the areas responsible for critical executive function, those functions necessary to be a competent adult, are not complete until the mid-20s. And the combination of the potency of some nicotine products and the teen brain can lead to nicotine dependence in a matter of days or weeks with even occasional vaping. And we simply don't know the effect of inhaled nicotine on those vulnerable brains. But I assure you, it is not going to be positive. Those of us on the front line of caring for kids in Portland and across the state um, can't keep up with this problem. There's no teen that I talk to that doesn't know who vapes at their school, and many report vaping during class. The term Nick sick has become part of our lexicon, and sadly, one thing that child health providers need to learn how to treat. Frankly, we have to do more to curtail this epidemic. Nobody needs Captain Crunch flavored liquid nicotine. Our youth don't have high paid lobbyists fighting on their behalf. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for your time, Chair Kafori, Commission members. My name is Mike Hannon. I'm the president of Cormark Distributors out of Clackamas. Uh, my company supplies food and non food products primarily to convenience stores from Alaska to Washington, all throughout the state of Oregon. Uh, we distribute to 250 stores within Multnomah County, uh, ranging in size from our local owned and operated plant pantry to single store operators. Half of our business in Multnomah Co County are single store operators. In the state of Oregon, we are a licensed and bonded distributor that provides FDA and Oregon Department of Revenue um, approved tobacco and nicotine items. 
in the interest of the public health, many of these items that were up for discussion today have been found by the FDA to be a proven means to help adults lessen their tobacco dependency. We respectfully request the commission to refrain from advancing this ordinance as is currently proposed. Please take the time to develop a more appropriate ordinance aimed at preventing minor access to flavored tobacco and nicotine. The convenience store industry in Oregon is one of the most taxed and highly regulated in our great state. We believe there's a better plan than a one county ban which will force adult consumers to take their business across county lines. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have online, uh, we have Robert uh, Strong Strongen, Guy Bentley, John Rotuno, and Catherine Murphy St uh, Strongen. Uh, Robert, uh, you may begin, you're unmuted. Not gonna work. You wanna, he should call, hang up and call back in. Yeah, we're not hearing you, Robert. Can you um, can you sign back in again, and we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, next, we have uh, Guy Bentley. Guy, you may begin. Good evening, Chair, members of the committee. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. My name is Guy Bentley. I'm director of Consumer Freedom of the Reason Foundation, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit public policy think tank. And one of my areas of specialty is tobacco harm reduction. Uh, we applaud um, the attention to reduce tobacco use, particularly amongst youth, uh, but we do fear that the manner of the ordinance does run counter to the goals of reducing tobacco-related mortality, specifically the strategy outlined by the Food and Drug Administration, and may produce some severe unintended consequences. Um, fortunately, I think some of the previous speakers might have been a bit out of date on their data because we've seen a huge reduction in youth e-cigarette use by more than 60% over the last two years, and youth smoking has fallen to a historic low of less than 2%. So we have great news on the youth front there. Uh, secondly, why do I say this might run counter to the FDA strategy? One is because all um, safer alternatives to combustible cigarettes, such as e-cigarettes, uh, nic uh, nicotine pouches, smokeless tobacco such as snooze, these are regulated by the Food and Drug Administration and for them to be marketed uh, legally they need to go through FDA review and be authorized by the FDA as quote appropriate for the protection of public health as several of these products already have been and many others are under review. So unfortunately with such a broad sweeping ordinance you could see the prohibition of products that the FDA has actually authorized as being harm reduction products appropriate for the protection of public health. Uh, secondly, um, some mention was said about the relative safety of e-cigarettes. Um, I would quote Brian King, who is the uh, head of the Office for Science at the Food and Drug Administration, who said recently that um, there is widespread misunderstanding about the public's um, information about relative risks of e-cigarettes, and that we know, quote, that e-cigarettes have markedly less risk than combustible cigarettes. Uh, so we do fear that blanket prohibitions of these kinds could run counter to the science that has been reviewed by the federal government. Time uh, is up. Also, when we look, we, when we look at the CDC your time, data- Your time's up, sir. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Apologies thank you, for thanks that. for coming. Thank you so much. Next, we have uh, John Rattuno. Hello, everybody, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thanks for having me. Uh, I'll be quick and I will echo the sentiments of the people who were before me uh, that were involved with law enforcement. My name is John Rotuno. I'm a retired ATF agent out of Chicago. I am an outsider, uh, 30 years on the job. I have been qualified in state and federal court uh, as being a gang crimes expert. And I have testified in court about gang activity, how they make their money. And I'm here to tell you that based on what I'm hearing, it sounds as if tobacco is in your county to stay, unfortunately. I, like I said, if I, if I am an outsider, what I, what I want you to do is please check with your, law, with your law enforcement people and hear what they have to tell you about street gang activity, how they enhance their open air drug markets using tobacco, uh, in particular menthol tobacco, and see see what see what what they say about about this issue um if you take away this revenue stream okay from the gangs they are going to go to clandestine locations somebody mentioned mexico 
Um, I happen to believe that black markets will be created um, from Mexico, from Russia, from China. I also believe that they will go into the neighboring states and other counties that don't have this prohibition, and they will bring the product back into your county. Or better yet, what they'll do is they'll bring in regular tobacco cigarettes and they'll spray them with menthol that they can buy on the internet. Again, I ask you to please check with your tactical units, your HIDA units, your gang crimes units in your, in your area and ask them what their feeling is about what you're about to do. Time is Actually, up. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Robert, it looks like you're back on. Let's see. Robert, can you try speaking? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, great. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, my name is Robert Strongen. I'm a Multnomah resident. Uh, I have a teenage son uh, who doesn't really believe that vapes and uh, doesn't hear that vapes are harmful at all. Uh, but I'm also a professor of chemistry at Portland State University, and I have studied the chemistry of toxin formation uh, in e-cigarettes now for over a decade. And I just want to cut to the chase and tell you that uh, it's known in the peer-reviewed literature, uh, work by my own research group, groups around the world, that adding flavors uh, as ingredients to electronic cigarettes increases toxic and emissions. Uh, that is, it increases levels of compounds like formaldehyde, acrolein, uh, and acetaldehyde, et cetera, uh, that uh, are, cause uh, harm to the lungs, to the respiratory system, uh, and, are carcin and some of which are also carcinogenic. It's well known that adding flavors increases uh, the exposure to these toxins. Uh, I also want to say that uh, work that we've done, again, uh, in collaboration with other groups and groups around the world, we have shown that the new nicotine salts uh, that uh, were popularized initially by the Juul company and now are very prevalent, what they do is they dull the harshness of nicotine. And when you combine that with flavors, uh, with uh, all these sweet flavors, uh, et cetera, and so on, you have, as, as, as one of the participants mentioned earlier, uh, youth that don't even know that they're vaping nicotine, okay? Uh, this is really uh, just simply targeting young people. Uh, this industry, and I'm not talking about the small business owners and people that we've heard from today, but the industry itself is just as insidious as big tobacco. They've lied to us about water vapor and these things. There's the, the, the way I got interested in this is someone came, showed me data from a Time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next we have in person, we have um, Wajdi Said, Sung Rae Cho, Yoon Se Kong, and Moon Hong Kim. Good evening, everybody. Good morning, Chair Kafuri and respected commissioners. It's really a blessing for me to be here to testify in a responsible democracy. And that's what we hope, that our elected officials will be more responsible in a healthy and very morally and ethically. Tobacco, you know, for those that labeling, you know, that the Arab and the Muslim or the Asian or African, that this is a culture of ours, this is not the culture of ours. I grew up as a native Yemeni. Our culture promotes coffee and many other healthy habits. Tobacco was long used in the early Americas, you know, when the, this continent was exploited you know, by the European settlers. It arrived, you know, the Spanish people, the Spanish colonizers took it from the Americas and introduced it to Europe. And they gave it to the, what we call today the British American tobacco. They are the exploiters as the way they exploited you know, the African people in the slavery and many other cultures in our beloved cultures in the Arab world and the Muslim world, or what we call Africa today and Asia as well. Unfortunately, for me as a scientist, you know, I feel that it is an insult to the human mind that when we claim that tobacco brings a lot of joy, you know, it doesn't bring a lot of joy, it brings a lot of illness and diseases. I lost friends that were smokers, and unfortunately, they made the wrong choice, and I made the right choice to avoid tobacco. 
Today, tobacco is not a good habit. It's an evil act, and we should fight it in whatever it takes to do so. Unfortunately, few of our members of our community participate in this, but we ask them, you know, for the love of God, for the love of our health, for the love of our families, don't exploit, don't make money out of the, out of the death of others. If you want to make money, make it healthy and wealthy. Thank Let you. us be responsible elected officials. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Your time's up. Thank you so much for coming. Um, just double checking that uh, Sungray Cho, Yoon Sik Hong, and Moon Hong Kim are not here. Okay. I'll move on to online. Um, we have Mary Stevens Crow, Martin Mendelson, Tim Gibbs, and Allison uh, Gaitanis. Um, Mary, would you like to begin, please? Mary, are you available to begin? Yes. Go ahead. Good evening, Chair Kapori and members of the Multnomah County Board of Commissioners. My name is Mary Crow, and I am the coordinator of substance use supports in the Department of Student Success and Health at Portland Public Schools. Portland Public Schools strongly encourages the Multnomah County Commission to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products, including menthol and e-cigarettes. Portland Public Schools have been ground zero for the e-cigarette and vaping epidemic in our community. The number of students who use an e-cigarette or vape has increased exponentially, and teachers and administrators across the district have been voicing how this has transitioned from a serious annoyance and distraction into a public health crisis. The level of flavored nicotine use in high schools has reached a nearly universal level that has spilled down into our middle schools and created a new crisis of its own, forcing principals to remove doors from bathroom stalls to reduce opportunities for in-school use children to experience nicotine withdrawals during class, and it's not uncommon for school hallways to be polluted with the sickening mixture of fruit-flavored nicotine vapor. For the 21-22 school year, there were approximately 300 low-level substance use violations, and half of these were for vaping. This is alarming because often these students are starting on a path to nicotine addiction for life. I'm deeply concerned about the health effects of this, this epidemic will create. Nicotine addiction is incredibly hard to beat and our students desperately do not need any additional distractions that will impede their ability to learn and participate in class. Portland Public Schools is working in a number of ways to prevent students Time is up. from beginning a nicotine addiction. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Martin Mendelson. You may begin. Uh, Martin, it looks like we can't hear you. Uh, Martin, we'll come back to you. Um, next we have Tim Gibbs. Uh, Tim, are you able to speak? I can't seem to unmute. You're on a phone that I can't unmute. Can you both Can you just me? try to um, log it back in again? Um, next, we have Allison Gaitanis. Allison, you may begin. Good evening, County Commissioners. My name is Allison Gaitanis, and I am a public high school teacher and resident of Multnomah County. While I believe that it is important to advocate for young people on being educated on the impacts of flavored tobacco and support the ban on flavored tobacco products that target youth, I absolutely do not think that hookah bars should be part of this ban. Hookah bars are deeply rooted in a cultural tradition that has been present throughout generations among Indian, Persian, Turkish, African, Palestinian, and other Middle Eastern families. Hookah is a culturally relevant and centuries-old practice among the Arab community around the world and in our own county. By not implementing the exemption for hookah bars, it targets small minority-owned businesses. 
There are only a few hookah bars left in the county, and to not give them this exemption would be denying them the limited spaces they already have for their immensely important cultural practices. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it looks like Tim uh, is back. Tim, can, can you speak? Tim? Yes. My oh. name is Tim Gibbs with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, and I wanted to thank Chair Kafori and the rest of the commissioners for considering this life-saving policy this evening. When considering a policy, it's important to know who is in favor of the policy and who's against it. You have groups like the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, American Heart Association, and American Lung Association trying to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. In terms of spending, who is spending money against these policies, it's without a doubt the big tobacco companies. In fact, disgraced companies like Altria, Juul, and RJ Reynolds have been spending tens of millions of dollars fighting these policies up and down the West Coast. And they're going to be spending a lot more. It's important to ask yourself why that is. It's precisely because they know they need to replace the customers their products kill with kids who will become lifelong customers. They need candy and minty menthol flavors to be on the shelves to hook kids. You've heard from Fumari tonight asking for an exemption for their product. Fumari is a tobacco company out of San Diego that produces flavored shisha. They're asking for an exemption which would result in a regulatory moat that would protect the tobacco that they make. While most candy tobacco or while most flavored tobacco products would be removed from shelves in Multnomah County, you might still be able to go to a flat pantry or a gas station and buy the blueberry muffin flavored tobacco product that, of course, appears on the Forum Fumari website. Our coalition is made up of public health, tobacco control, youth, and social justice organizations, and we're grateful for the hard work of the commissioners as well as staff produce, to produce a strong ordinance with no loopholes. We urge the board to pass the ordinance as is and not create loopholes with exemptions. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have in person Michelle Wu uh, Jong Cho, Jay Kun Kim, Brian Graham, and Douglas Peterson. <clears throat> you can begin. Okay. You're first. My name is Doug Peterson. I own Pete's Market in downtown Portland. I've been in retail all my life, uh, Fred Meyer, for 24 years, and I started my own business, convenience store in downtown, in 1984, and I've been downtown ever since. Uh, it's true, people will, if they can't buy it here, they'll go someplace else, but they'll probably, when they go someplace else, they're probably going to be spending their money over there and not not in our businesses here in Multnomah County. Uh, I really believe it has unintended consequences, but the black community generally, if they smoke, they smoke uh, uh, Newports or Marlboro menthol. Uh, the menthol product is what, what their choice is. And I think it's just plain racist to <laughs> uh, not you know, to, to ban menthol cigarettes. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's terrible. Uh, the county, the licensing for county or for tobacco is three times the liquor price, liquor li license price. I think they have so much money on hand that they can come up with all these things to, uh, and I just think it's interfering with business, and I think that's just tragic. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Graham, and I own Still Smoking on, in Southeast Portland, um, here in Multnomah County. Um, I do pay my tobacco tax, and I'm heavily taxed by you guys. So uh, I don't want you guys going to lose a lot of taxes if you do ban this. I am here today to oppose the total tobacco flavor ban. I started my business um, in the early 2000s. Uh, myself and my employees live and work in Multnomah County. Multiple families depend on my business for their livelihood and for my own. Some of them have been with me for over 10 years. I have been selling tobacco in Multnomah County for 18 years. This is my passion and my livelihood. I card everyone. My business is 21 and over. No one can come into my store unless they are 21. I am the gatekeeper. There is no gatekeeper as 
7-Elevens or um, Safeways, Winko, that sell um, flavored alcohol. But I am the gatekeeper at my store. I am 21 and over. This total tobacco ban would lead to an even bigger illegal black market and will cause more crime than it already to deal with what, what you've done by legalizing cocaine, heroin in this state. This total tobacco flavor ban will hurt Multnomah County citizens and businesses. I care, I do care. I card and an illegal, mark, an illegal black market does not care or card. With the margins I work at my store, this total tobacco flavor ban happens. It would undermine my ability to operate and I couldn't continue to remain open. Uh, please vote no on this total tobacco ban. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next we have online uh, Martin Mendelson, Erica Moseson, Alex Romero, and Matt Evans. Uh, Martin, would you like to try again? Yes, please. Can you oh, hear me now? Wonderful. We can hear you. Thank you. Yes, you can? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, members, my name is Martin Mendelson. I am a family physician, a neurophysiologist, and an epidemiologist. Just this month, in an appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court, R.J. Reynolds explained that upholding a California ban on flavored pro tobacco products, quote, would result in business closure, layoffs, loss of access to one of the country's largest markets, loss of brand loyalty, and tens of millions of dollars to compete for former menthol smokers who do not wish to stop using tobacco products. In other words, they'd have to fight other tobacco companies to hold on to those already addicted persons. They also argue that, quote, if consumers cannot obtain flavored tobacco products from reputable establishments because of California's ban, they may well try to obtain them from illicit sources. Not only could an increased illicit trade present potential risks to consumers, but it would almost certainly lead to an increase in associated crimes. In other words, like Prohibition brought in Al Capone, this ban would cause similar havoc. Make no mistake, nicotine is the most addicting drug known. My old friends Eric and Denise Kandel, premier scientists in this field, have shown that nicotine is a potent gateway drug and that nicotine use leads to greater risk of cocaine addiction, not the other way around. I'll close by quoting them, quote, nicotine acts as a gateway drug on the brain and this effect is likely to occur whether the exposure is from smoking tobacco, passive tobacco smoke, or e-cigarettes. More effective prevention programs need to be developed for all the products that contain nicotine, especially those targeting young people. Our data suggests that effective intervention would not only prevent smoking and its negative health consequences, but also decrease the risk of progressing to illicit drug use and addiction. And Time is oh, up. I re Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Erica Moseson. You may begin. Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Moseson. I'm a pulmonary and critical care medicine physician um, caring for patients in Multnomah County. Um, I'm also the um, a member of the American Lung Association Board here in Oregon. And I encourage you um, to pass a comprehensive tobacco um, flavored nicotine ban. Um, I just wanna, I know there's probably a lot of testimony and I, I think I've testified to you before about the differences between inhaling a toxic substance, um, inhaling a food substance that's recognized as safe versus eating it. Um, all these, um, the American Thoracic Society has characterized all multiple of these inhalational agents as you know, toxic to the lungs with all sorts of adverse health effects, right? You don't want to inhale your cinnamon challenge <laughs> versus eating it. But I think I just want to tell a story that's really been sitting with me kind of as a mom. So my pager went off um, when I was covering a manual um, and it was to the pediatric clinic or the pediatric emergency department, which I thought was wild. And I thought it was a wrong number, but they were calling me to perform an adult invasive procedure for the lungs of a teenager who did not look 21, whose lungs had just been shredded to the point that she actually needed an, a biopsy that was a, a technique that our pediatric pulmonologists don't do. And I just remember as we were putting her under in seat, just looking at this child who definitely was not 21 and just, um, and you know, it had turned out that unbeknownst to their parents, they had been using e-cigarettes and vaping. And I'd actually ask, so like, how do you get them? Like we have this, you know, tobacco 21, right? You can't get it. She's like, oh, you just buy them. Like you just go into the corner store. You can just buy them anywhere. I was like, have you ever been stopped or ever been carded? And the answer is no. And that has just been um, just sitting with me, 
you know, and I know you can read the studies and hear the science. I mean, I think, you know, inhaling flavors is not safe, right? I have lost way too many patients to combustible cigarettes. I hate tobacco cigarettes more than anybody. Um, and I want them to have any way to quit. But no one needs to inhale flavors, right? I mean, there are e-cigarettes, there are these other things. I am sure people enjoy it. Um, but, you know, that costs all of us a lot of healthcare time, dollars. You know, time we is up. patients on ECMO, um, which costs a lot. So on you go, I think. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, Alex Romero, you may start. Good evening, continuing commissioners. My name is Alex Romero. I work for Jackson's Food Stores, and I'm in charge of seven stores in the Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some input on the result of this tobacco flavor ban. Uh, we believe that the result of the ban would alter purchasing habits, moving sales outside the county boundaries. Loss of sales would not be limited just to tobacco products. It also affects secondary purchases, affecting revenue loss further for businesses owners. Ultimately, it will not only impact store all operations, profit margins, employee retention, and it might provide clear distinction between owners operators with multiple stores versus independent retailers owners with one of two stores. Multnomah County adults consumers should not be forced to look outside the county for an adult product of choice. As well, responsible Multnomah County businesses, primarily small businesses, should not be penalized for being located in the county. Along with this, clear evidence exists that minors access most of the restricted products through adult family and friends rather than with a retail setting. So passing uh, the ban flavor will affect in multiple levels to many retailers. That's all I want to testify today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Matt Evans, you're next. Matt, you're, are you available? Hi, are you, am I on now? Yes, you are. You may begin. Oh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Chair Kafori and members of the Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. My name is Matt Evans. I'm a lifelong Portland resident, and I'm here representing the Taxpayer Association of Oregon. For a variety of reasons, the Taxpayer Association of Oregon opposes efforts by local governments and the state government to ban flavored products. Firstly, being able to switch to vaping helps people quit smoking tobacco. A study by the prestigious King's College of London found a 10% improvement in quitting rates over all other methods by using vaping. As many as two thirds of smokers in the study were able to quit cigarettes and stay off them. Banning flavorings will make this method less effective as it will be harder for smokers to continue vaping if the only choices are flavors they don't like. We all want people to quit smoking if they can. We should not be taking away tools that make it possible. Secondly, it's important to remember that banning flavors is going to encourage and grow the illegal market for these products. This illegal market is already estimated to provide up to 10% of all tobacco products. People will find what they want and a market that doesn't have to care about things like safety or regulation is going to create more tragedies. I don't know about you, but I pretty much had my fill of died from counterfeit products containing fentanyl headlines. Like the Taxpayer Association, we know that Multnomah County cares about small business. This action will damage many small businesses in the county and could lead to the closure of convenience stores, which in some neighborhoods are the only nearby source of groceries. We urge a no vote on any proposal to ban flavored vaping products. Doing so will only hurt legal businesses while rewarding illegal markets, Time creating is up. more smugglers and illegal, potentially even more dangerous products Thank and you. cost the county tax revenue. Thank you. Next, we have in person Debbie Kitchen, Avery Dukes, James Bishara, and Adam Cruz. Good 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Chair Kafori and commissioners for this opportunity to uh, testify tonight. I am Debbie Kitchen, a Multnomah County resident and small business owner. I'm here today to support banning flavored tobacco and vape products. The industry develops these products to target kids and teens. This can often lead to a lifetime of addiction and health consequences. Uh, we are in a crisis regarding youth addiction and use of tobacco products. Banning the sale of these products is a measured way to the, reduce the impacts of these harmful products. 81% of youth who have used tobacco to start uh, start with a flavored product. Flavors include gummy bear, cotton candy, cool mint. Flavored tobacco products are highly appealing to children and teenagers and lead to more adolescent nicotine addiction. Addiction. Finally, we all pay for the health consequences of tobacco addiction. As a small business employer, health insurance is uh, one of our largest overhead expenses. But while these financial costs are serious, they pale in comparison to the heartbreaking emotional and social costs to communities and families of lifelong tobacco addictions. Please support a ban on flavored tobacco products. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Kafori and Multnomah County Commissioners. For the record, my name is Avery Dukes, and I'm a Multnomah, Multnomah County resident here this evening to urge your support of a comprehensive flavor restriction policy with no exemptions or carve-outs. I had a whole story to tell you today, but after hearing from others, I'd like to tell everyone here that the white men telling us the black community thinks the policy is racist are wrong. As a black woman, I can say with confidence that we abhor the disproportionate targeting the tobacco companies and stores have been doing for years and are still doing today, and they shouldn't mistake addiction for enjoyment. Getting black folks hooked on substances has been a strategy for economic growth by the white community for generations, and you have the power to end this pattern in Multnomah County. Others here will tell you the restrictions will be an economic travesty, but nobody should make a living off of destroying the health of their communities. Stores survived before flavored tobacco and they can survive after. I urge you to recognize that public health is the greater issue here. Again, I urge you to support a comprehensive tobacco flavor restriction policy to protect the safety of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. James Bashara. I'm a pediatric cardiologist at OHSU Dornbecko Children's Hospital and a member of the Oregon Pediatric Society. Today I'm providing comments on behalf of the Oregon Pediatric Society in support of restricting the sale of flavored tobacco um, in all locations. I would like to talk about the power of flavored tobacco and how it relates to developing addiction to tobacco products because addiction is really the key point here. 95% of adult users have started using before age 21. This is a pediatric problem. And this is because the adolescent and young adult brain are exceptionally susceptible to the addictive effects of nicotine. The tobacco industry has known for decades that flavors encourage kids to start using tobacco products. Our research and the scientific side of things shows the exact same thing. Over 80% of kids start by using a flavored tobacco product our research also tells us that when kids use flavored products, they use more frequently and for longer durations. While flavors are not a new problem, e-cigarettes and the modern tobacco products have exploded the number of flavors available on the market. There are thousands of flavors of e-cigarette market, none of which have been tested for safety, and some of which are known to cause fatal diseases when chronically inhaled. The marketing and scientific research are in complete agreement that flavors are one of the most powerful factors influencing kids to start using and become addicted to tobacco products. Restricting the sale of tobacco products will have the desired result in reducing the number who start using and a number of adults who suffer tobacco-related diseases. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Adam. Hi, everybody. So uh, I work at a vape shop called Rose City Vapors. They've been open for about eight years now, and we have never failed an inspection or failed to card someone when we were making a sale. Um, in fact, we just passed our most recent one. 
Uh, we take the sale to minors very seriously, and as such, we're very strict in how we card people, no matter who they are, whenever they come into our establishment. And I think that the major issue here is uh, there aren't enough penalties for people who violate these uh, laws and regulations that we have. I know of one shop that has violated it at least three times, and they were caught each time doing it, and they never shut down. Even when reported, they weren't shut down. So if we were to increase these penalties, it would be more beneficial to everyone involved. At least that's my opinion. And uh, we have evidence that shows that people, particularly children that quit vaping, they do go on to start smoking. It doesn't stop anything, it just changes the venue. So banning flavors won't solve the core issue here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have online, uh, Nirdosh Dakal, Dr. Philip Gardner, Sophia Takla, and Malet Alemai Yohu. Uh, Nirdosh, would you like to begin, please? Sure, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Nirdosh Takal, and I own a retail store here in Multnomah County. I'm here today to ask you to oppose a flavor ban. Uh, I am all for finding a way to not entice youth and young adults to try and use tobacco products. As a father, I do not want my kids to use tobacco product. And as a former smoker, I wish I had never tried smoking because uh, quitting was uh, difficult. The reason why I oppose uh, this particular ordinance is twofold. One, I feel like it does not do enough banning uh, only and county will, will, will push the sales to illegal market and to the neighboring county. That's one of the reasons. And second, I'm worried about uh, wasting taxpayer fund on litigation based on a uh, district court judge decision on Washington County. These two were uh, my primary concern to oppose this particular ordinance. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next is Dr. Philip Gardner. You may begin. Look, thank you for having me. I'm Dr. Philip Gardner. I'm one of the co-chairs of the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. We've been in the fight around this, around menthol for some time. Let me just applaud the um, commissioners for taking up this issue at this time. Um, frankly, this couldn't come at a better time. We already know, and you've been heard, that youth start with these products, these flavored products. And it hasn't been mentioned, but we have to say that we're in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Omicron surge, and nothing could be more important than getting these products out of our community. Unfortunately, we know that smokers are more susceptible to COVID-19 infection. And my sense is if the commission truly wants a healthier Monmouth County, and I believe that you do, then I think it's <clears throat> your responsibility to get menthol-flavored cigarettes and flavored little cigars straight out of the community. Let's be clear, um, the predatory marketing of these products, particularly in the African-American community, has led to disproportionate death and disease in that community. But it's not only, it's not only for African-Americans, Latinos disproportionately smoke these products, let folks from the LGBT community disproportionately smoke these products, Puerto Ricans disproportionately use these products, Native Hawaiians, Filipinos, women disproportionately lose the, use these products. And it's because of the predatory marketing practice. Let me just make a statement about a number of the points that have been made tonight. One, it is not a thousand year old tradition in the Middle East. Tobacco didn't show up in the Middle East until three or 400 years ago and only became popular in the last 200 years and only among males. It's only been in the last 15 years that flavors like Blue Mist, Irish Kissed, and Sex on the Beach, which have nothing to do with Middle Eastern culture, have become partial. There's also been discussion tonight about how this is time a is up. reduction. Thank you for your time, sir. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Sophia Takla, you may begin. Good morning, Chair Kafori and the members of the Multnomah County Board of Commissioners. My name is Sophia Takla, and I am a volunteer with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, the nonprofit, nonpartisan advocacy affiliate of the American Cancer Society. We encourage you to support and adopt this ordinance to finally end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. Uh, Tobacco-related illness is the number one cause of preventable death in Oregon, greater than the next six combined, including car crashes, firearms, 
alcohol, drugs, obesity, and the flu. We know that 95% of adults who smoke started before the age of 21, and that 85% of young people who smoke first started with a flavored tobacco product. I am 22 years old. I'm a Multnomah County resident of my entire lifetime, and you cannot believe how viciously and covertly big tobacco is ensnaring my generation. It starts young. Kids would sneak out of class in high school to use an e-cigarette on bathroom breaks. Next thing you know, it's literally in every car during lunch period or behind every group of students that shows up tardy. I've always been a stickler for the rules, but even friends I felt aligned values with me would go on to try their hand at smoking, thinking that this was the ticket to belonging. And in college, nothing changed. My peers often held up their binders or laptops to hide their e-cigarette use, concealed in sleeves because they swore they needed it to get through the day. We've worked together since 2019 to end the sale of flavored tobacco products in our county. And while the pandemic put this policy on the back burner, in that time, literally thousands of young adults here, my friends, your kids, your students, and our future have been hooked into a deadly lifelong addiction. <laughs> wow, they are good at hiding it. Flavored tobacco products have no role in our community. Their removal is past due, and the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network encourages you to act boldly and urgently. As a young person born and raised here, I am begging you to please support this ordinance with an emergency clause. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Malet Alemai Yohu, uh, you may begin. Hello, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I am a Multnomah County resident. Um, I am also a, a first generation East African adult. Um, I'm, I'm in sorry, my mid 20s. Can you say your name? State your name for the record. Oh. Uh, sorry, my name is Mahalit. Thanks. Keep going. So, I am all too familiar with um, these kinds of tobacco uses, especially the flavored tobacco uses. Um, I've had my own difficulties with uh, using these kind of tobacco products. Um, I would go months without um, using some of these products in the hopes of kind of uh, putting a stop to my bad habits. But a few months would go by and I would um, just yearn the usage of them once again, and I think that flavoring has a lot to uh, to do with this. So I see a lot of my peers, um, my friends, my family members, my coworkers that share these same kind of experiences. Um, I'd like to point out again that the variety of different flavors in these uh, tobacco products, um, I think, is what has a big part of keeping us going back. Um, I think re regulating these uh, kind of tobacco cells will help at least create some kind of barriers in the already effortless way on receiving these flavored tobacco products. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. And next we have in person Emerson Hamlin, Hannah Frey, Christina Bodamir, and Depesh Thapa. Good evening. Hi. Chair Kafori and Multnomah County Commissioners, for the record, my name is Hannah Fry and I'm a Multnomah County resident here this evening to urge your support of a comprehensive flavor restriction policy with no exemptions or carve outs. Growing up, I was always under the impression that my generation was the one to end smoking. As early as elementary school, we all saw the campaigns with graphic photos of black lung and the dangers of smoking, and it seemed to have worked. I never would have predicted seeing my closest friends become addicted to tobacco and nicotine until the rise of e-cigarettes. Suddenly, colorful and flavorful marketing of e-cigarettes were popping up all over the town in which I attended college. Seemingly overnight, vaping was the cool thing to do. I would constantly hear it's not as bad as smoking or it doesn't have tobacco, making vulner vulnerable young adults who were previously non-smokers subject to nicotine addiction. These were my friends who I never saw smoke before, who would urge their parents and loved ones to quit cigarette smoking because it was gross. These were future doctors, teachers, and community leaders who suddenly could not make it through one single conversation without hitting their vape. Marketing harmful and addictive devices to taste like candy and appeal to the youth has hooked a new generation of smokers. Currently, I've been out of college for over three years and have seen many friends attempt to quit 
after years of a harmful habit, and many are still struggling today. Smoking is the number one leading cause of preventable death in Oregon, and I do not want my friends or the next generation of children to be included in that statistic. Again, I urge your support of a comprehensive flavor restriction policy with no exemptions or carve-outs. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, my name is Christina Bodemer. I'm the Oregon Government Relations Director for the American Heart Association. This here this evening to urge your support of this comprehensive ordinance. It's no accident that tobacco companies have flooded the market with flavors like fruit, mint, and candy. These flavors are specifically designed to entice use, and that's exactly what's happened. This is a health equity and social justice issue. We need your leadership to protect community from the tobacco industry's predatory use of flavors. I'll skip through some of my testimony because you've heard a lot of it this evening and point out just a couple things. Um, menthol products with their cooling and soothing effects particularly entice kids to use tobacco. Nationally, more than half of all youth and young adult smokers smoke menthol cigarettes. E-cigarettes are not an FDA-approved cessation device, and data tells us that instead of quitting, often users switch products or become dual users. To ensure we don't lose a new generation of kids to nicotine, we urge the removal of all flavored tobacco products from the market. Kids, we've seen, will gravitate to any flavors that are left if they're available, and exemptions create winners and losers in the sale of a product that kills over half of its users. Your own tobacco retail licensing data shows that 21 and over stores are among the worst of failure rates for minimum sales inspections. And there's no public health, justific public health justification for continuing to allow the sale of flavored hookah. Hookah smoking is addictive and deadly. Hookah users inhale as much smoke in one session as a cigarette smoker would inhale in 100 cigarettes. That's five packs. On top of this, hookah has more smoke than nicotine, carbon monoxide, tar, and cancer-causing chemicals than cigarettes. This evening and in the past several years since you started hearing this, about this ordinance and this policy, uh, you have heard from pediatricians, doctors, nurses, youth addiction services programs, parents, legislators, youth, community health clinics, and nonprofit health organizations all asking you to take a stand and choose protecting kids over profits. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming. Um, just double checking that um, Emerson Hamlin and Depesh Thapa are not in the audience. Okay. I will move on to um, online testimony. Stephanie uh, Phillips Bridges, Esperanza Zagal, Camille Cummings, and Sue Flock. Stephanie, you may begin. Hi, sorry. Um, dear Chair and Commissioners, my name is Stephanie Phillips Bridges. I'm a policy analyst at the Urban League of Portland, and I live in the Rockwood neighborhood. I'm representing the Urban League of Portland, one of the oldest, uh, one of Oregon's oldest civil rights and social service organizations, empowering African Americans and others to achieve equality in education, employment, health, economic security, and quality of life. I'm writing you because flavored tobacco products are harming African American community members in Multnomah County, and we urge you to end the sale of flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County. As you may know, Washington County has done this, and Multnomah County should make a stand on this critical issue. The Oregon Health Authority states cigarette smoking is the most common cause of preventable death and disease in Oregon. It kills nearly 8,000 Oregonians annually and costs the state approximately $2.9 billion in health care costs, loss, productivity, and premature death. Between 2017 and 2020, Monomah County re reported 4,796 tobacco-related deaths. Oregon has experienced notable successes in tobacco control, but smoking remains a major public health problem. Cigarettes continue to addict nearly one, to five, one in five Oregon adults, and cigarette smoking is disproportionate effect, has a disproportionate effect on some of Oregon's most vulnerable groups. Over half, 54% of current youth smokers, 12 to 17, smoke menthol, menthol cigarettes, compared to less than one-third of smokers ages 35 and older. Cigarette smoking is higher among adult African American, 25.3%, um, compared to whites. An ordinance to ban the sale of flavored tobacco is necessary because African American youth and adults are being targeted and negatively impacted by tobacco. Through banning the use of flavored tobacco and vaping, we now have the opportunity to protect the African American community. 
Big Tobacco claims that banning menthol, Hi, along with other flavors. Thank you. I've submitted a written testimony for you to read further. Thank you. Thank you so much. Esperanza, you may begin. Good evening. My name is Esperanza Zagal. I'm an epidemiologist living in Multnomah County, where I work as a community health fellow with the American Public Health Association and Kaiser. I'm here to request the ban of all sales of flavored tobacco products with no exceptions or exemptions. So as a public health professional, I want to echo what you've heard. Tobacco use leads to morbidity and early death. Disease associated with tobacco includes cancer, cardiovascular disease, pulmonary disease, immune system disorders, bone disease, addiction, and early death. And changing the mode of delivery from cigarettes to vaping is not the answer because we see that when tobacco is vaped, this leads to vaping illness, which is a form of respiratory disease. And again, addiction and early death. Fa flavored tobacco products target youth, including minors and minority communities in the sales and advertising of these products. Many people my age and younger are vaping. I see vaping in school campuses, on the streets and at parties. The first time I was handed a vape pen, my 17 year old friend ensured me that vaping is safe and not addictive. Unfortunately, this assumption is common, but it is false because the reality is that vaping is dangerous and it is addictive. And as a member of the BIPOC community, it saddens me to see that the minority communities are being targeted in ma racist marketing campaigns, and this has to stop. Not necessarily because they're BIPOC communities, but because no community wants addiction, more addiction, or more preventable disease, or early death. As a public health professional, a young person, and a person of color, I'm asking you to ban all flavored tobacco products in Multnomah County with no exceptions or exceptions. Thank you. Thank you. Camille, you're next. Good evening, uh, County Commis Commissioners. My name is Camille Cummings, and I'm a member of the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. We advocate for the Black community and other communities of color who have been left out of life saving public health le legislation. I'd like to thank you for considering this item that for decades has negatively impacted African Americans and other vulnerable populations. Menthol is the ultimate candy flavor. It helps the poison go down easier and drives tobacco-related deaths and disease nationwide. While the use of non-flavored tobacco cigarettes has been decreasing, the use of menthol cigarettes is on the rise among youth and adults, um, include youth, uh, adults, Latinos, Blacks, and Whites. 85% of African-American adults and 94% of black youth who smoke are using menthol products. These striking statistics arise from the predatory marketing of these products in the black community, where there are more advertisements, more lucrative promotions, and most disturbing menthol cigarettes are cheaper in the, in the black community compared to other communities. These predacious practices for the past 50 years have led to black people dying disproportionately from heart attacks, lung cancer, strokes, and other tobacco related diseases. Monmouth County could potentially join a growing number of counties, um, states, and cities across the country that are prohibiting, excuse me, jurisdiction wide, the sales of menthol cigarettes and other flavored tobacco products. Now is the time to adopt strong tobacco control measures that can protect our families. We already know that menthol makes the poison go down easier. So I encourage uh, Monmouth County to put the health of your citizens at the forefront of your thoughts and not the interest and profits of the tobacco industry. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, you may speak next. Good evening, um, members of the Multnomah County Commission. For the record, my name is Sue Flocky. I'm a professor in the Department of Family Medicine at Oregon Health and Sciences University. And I'm here today to support, uh, in support of the measure to restrict the sale of flavored tobacco and nicotine products. By way of background, my current research is focused on reducing the harms from tobacco products. And I do this by working with primary care practices, health systems, and community resources to identify individuals at risk and connect those individuals with tobacco cessation support resources. I've also worked on a large project to develop and evaluate 
a measure of nicotine dependence among adolescents and young adults who use cigarillos and multiple tobacco products, including, including e-cigarettes. So there's multiple studies that show that youth are more likely to try flavored tobacco products and perceive that fruit flavors are less harmful than other traditional flavors. Nearly seven out of 10 youth who were current tobacco users reported that they use flavor products. And several studies show that 13 to 25 year olds that use e-cigarettes strongly prefer sweet and fruit flavored products. Some studies show that upwards of 80% of youth initiate tobacco use with a flavored product. All of this demonstrates why the measure that you're considering today is so important to the health and well being of our community and to the youth who are the targets of these products. The evidence shows that flavor restrictions do have an impact on the sale of e cigarettes and particularly fruity and sweet products. In a study of states that imposed a flavor restriction compared to other states that did not, there's an overall decrease in e cigarette sales. Time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have in person Salome Chimuku, Chris Kim, Annie Teigen, and Daywood Zainel. Good evening, my name is Daoud uh, Zainal. Um, I'm here um, to support the, um, not to ban uh, flavored tobacco. I'm a business owner, I own a hookah lounge, and I feel like it's really wrong um, to uh, ban hookahs. Um, hookahs are traditional and have been around for 100 years. Um, and there's a lot of people that in our community that enjoy coming to the hookah lounge and that's their cultural and taking away that, I think that's gonna really, um, uh, it's gonna take away their having fun because that's the thing that we actually do, that's our culture. And also it's really dangerous to take away um, flavored tobacco vapes. Um, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of illegal, you know, sale of tobacco on the streets and that's gonna cause a really bad, um, uh, you know, problems between, you know, especially like young people that smoke uh, uh, tobacco in general. And I think it's gonna create bigger problem for law enforcement and it's just gonna create, um, you know, a lot of difficulties for everyone and I feel like it's everyone's right to do whatever they like. And it's also by choice. Um, so, I mean, to help the youth, I think, I feel like um, schools should educate um, kids to not um, use tobacco, and they should also warn them about the health um, problems that they could, you know, have from uh, uh, using tobacco in general. Uh, it's really obvious, it's also by choice. Um, everyone knows good from bad, and, uh, and I feel like hookahs, you know, it's really wrong to take away that. Vapes, I mean, it's something new that just happened. Um, that could be something that. Thank uh, you. Thanks for coming tonight. No good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Chair, uh, County Chair Caffrey, and then uh, County Commissioners. For the record, my name is Chris Kim. I'm the Vice President of Oregon CAGRO, the Korean American Grocers Association. We are here today to ask you to oppose Moloma County's proposed flavored tobacco ban. Oregon CAGRO representing over 180 members who are the first and second generation Americans that have worked so hard to achieve their American dreams. Our members are very proud of the family business that they own and operate across Moloma County and the state of the Oregon. Many of our members could not be here today as they're busy working in their stores and caring for their communities. Our board is here on behalf of the, our members to ensure that Oregon CAGRO members have deep ties to Moloma County. Oregon CAGRO members are responsible business owners who support and follow age verification procedure 
when selling tobacco product. Oregon CAGRO members take our all responsibilities to care for the community very seriously. Our stores are essential business and provide locally purchase point for the food for many Maloma County residents. If legal flavor tobacco sales are banned in Maloma County, many of our member store will be forced to close to their, food, uh, their doors. Please oppose this proposed ban and instead work with Oregon CAGRO and Maloma County retailers who are first line of defense in preventing kids from the purchasing flavored tobacco product. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Kafuri and um, commissioners. My name is Annie Tagan, and I'm with Tobacco Free Kids, um, here representing youth and young adults that we work with all across the state of Oregon. Uh, I'm also here rec representing Carrie Neeson with the American Lung Association. She fell ill and was not able to make it and wanted me to express her support um, and appreciation for you all in supporting this ordinance. I just want to share three things. The first is thank you. Thank you for taking this on. It takes bold leaders, and I love seeing five female bold leaders um, taking this on. Um, it takes bold leaders to take on big tobacco. Second, I wanted actually to provide a visual for you this evening. Um, we've been talking about these things all night and not have the chance to see them. Um, you know, my son loves Sour Patch Belts. I don't know if you've seen those. They're pretty disgusting, but they're a type of candy that kids seem to love. And um, this is, these are strawberry belt flavored um, vape juice from Candy King. So if that's not marketed at kids, I don't know what is. Um, here's another, like a sugared cereal, alphabet cereal, I don't know if you remember that, um, marketed towards kids. And then there's also Mr. Malt Flurries, um, an Oreo cookie flavored vape juice. And kids, are, and I also wanted to share this, these are the two for one, very popular, you know, like black and milds that are sold, um, typically two for 99 cents. Um, very, very popular with middle school and high school kids and a great flavored starter product. Um, and kids, you know, I have two teenagers myself, and I can tell you that they see kids vaping in school all the time, whether it's um, up their hoodie sleeve or perhaps in a watch like this, which isn't actually a watch, <laughs> if I can get it off, but it's a vape device that kids can wear, anybody can wear um, on their wrist and vape from it. So kids are doing this in class all the time, um, unknowingly, and in bedrooms. Finally, um, I just wanted to say that, you know, as someone who works on this issue as an advocate across the country, um, you know, hundreds of these laws have passed and the sky has not fallen. Um, kids are being protected. Um, kids are no longer accessing these products. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Chair, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Salome Chumuku. I use she, her pronouns. I am here tonight to urge you to support an end of the sale of flavored tobacco products. I'll stay that I will stick with what I know best, and that is my lived experience. We've heard a lot from a lot of people about what is black culture, what is African culture. I will sit here today and tell you that black and African culture is joy. It is dancing. It is oral tradition. It is sitting with family. It is holding oneself to a level of that your body is sacred and it is worth saving. It is not tobacco. It is not using harmful products that will destroy your community from the inside out. Black culture is about dance. It is about survival. It is about empowerment. African culture is about survival. It is about having your grandmother tell you old stories. It is about having the hopes and dreams that your parents moved to this country to have you to have and to go boldly to where in areas which other people have not seen you there before. It is not using hookah. It is not consuming tobacco products. And I would urge that you end the sale of these harmful products because in Multnomah County, we are seeing a stark number of youth. We're seeing a stark number of people of color dying from these products. And to say that this is not important, to say this is not as important as other issues in the area is minimalizing their lives and the lives of their children. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have virtual testimony. Um, Sheila LaPlante, Mayor McBull, uh, I'm so sorry, uh, Haoua Dogo, Jonathan Frotzscheg. Sheila, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Are you able to speak? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, thank you. <clears throat> I'm gonna set up this time to charm, I guess. 
And thank you all the board members of Multnomah County. I am an elderly lady that is still working in the tobacco business. I am very, very, uh, very, very strong on keeping the vape products out of uh, minors and children's hands. But I also know from me and many, many customers and friends, we have used vaping to quit smoking. I have smoked for 50 years. I have now not smoked or had any nicotine in over 10 years. I use a vape pen. I think we lost her. Oh, keep going. I think we lost her. Sheila, are you available? Okay. Sorry, Sheila, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, mute you. Um, we'll try to come back to you. Okay, um, next is uh, Mayor. Um, you may begin. Yes, uh, good evening, board. Can you hear me? Yes, uh huh. All right, thank you for your time. My name is Mayor Makbul. I'm a minority owner of Max Mini Mart in downtown Portland and Multnomah County by Portland State University campus. I own the store with my brother, Nader Makbul. We're a hardworking family with a, of 10, and we employ seven Oregonians with us as well. I plead with you to vote no on this ban. It will hurt us in a number of ways. We are already battling and trying to survive from the COVID epidemic, stifling inflation, taxes, and more taxes, and more license fees, and more license fees, and we keep going up. Only way we survive is because we have major debt, because we took an SBA loan to survive and to keep our employees with us. If you do this flavored ban, it's not going to do anything. People are going to still smoke. They're still going to vape. They're still going to do all kinds of stuff. What I want you to do is educate more, train more, enforce more. We, we and myself and every other store owner, we are 100% behind this. We don't want kids to do any of this. But at the same time, they keep going after us. They want to keep this, the regular flavors. It's okay. But they put a weed store in every corner in every neighborhood. It's okay. The alcohol, it's okay. All the flavors are the same in everything. The wines, the seltzers, the hard liquors, the oils, the CBD gummies. Everything is the same. But they're going after us for what reason? I don't know. They keep saying the kids, the kids, the kids. The kids, they need to be have take some responsibility. The parents need to enforce and go and make sure their kids not doing this. We are doing our best not to sell to these kids. We are not out there actively going for them. Hey guys, come take the, the, the product from us. We don't do that. We will never do that. So please take into effect what is going on. Take this as a common sense. My store has been broken into five times in the last two years. We've been assaulted. We have homeless people everywhere. We have drugs everywhere. We have crime everywhere. We need this to survive. We cannot keep doing this, Time keep is doing up. this every two years. They keep going after us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm Thank so you. sorry about mispronouncing your name, but Ha-O-A? You, you're next. Hello. My name is Hawa Dogo, and I'm the policy organizer at Obstruct Public Health. I am here today to argue in favor of a menthol ban. Um, to be honest, the tobacco industry has unapolog unapologetically killed black people for decades. Um, tobacco has been a major driver for health inequities and disparities in black communities, um, especially with the use of menthol products. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't hear you. There, there's a lot of background noise. Um, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think I figured it out. Okay. Sorry. Um, yes. So tobacco is a major driver for health inequities and disparities in Black communities, especially with the use of menthol products because they are more addicting and studies have shown that it is harder for people who use menthol products to quit. That accompanied with the racial injustices and challenges that black communities face every day, it creates a deadly cocktail of assault on our mental health because 
a lot of these tobacco companies are advertising their products as helping with stress relief and reduction for tobacco, but instead they're just as harmful and they don't help with stress. It's a temporarily fix that only makes things worse in the long term. And so our goal at Upstream Public Health is to work with communities to align our goals and see how what our communities have to say about a menthol ban and how it can actually help our communities versus kill our communities. Um, we have, according to the FDA, it would save about 250,000 lives up. by passing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, you're up next. Good evening, Chair Kafori and commissioners. For the record, my name is Jonathan Froxwake, and I'm testifying on behalf of Cascade AIDS Project and Prism Health to urge you to support this proposed ban on the sale of flavored tobacco and e-cigarette products in Multnomah County. As an LGBTQ plus health organization, CAP and Prism are deeply concerned about both the disproportionate use of tobacco in the LGBTQ plus community and its impact on our community's health. According to the Oregon Health Authority, 20% of gays and lesbians in Oregon and 25% of bisexuals smoke cigarettes. That's compared with only 17% of straight people. Across the country, LGBTQ youth are more likely to use tobacco products and transgender youth, for example, report smoking cigarettes at four times the rate of their cis peers. These disparities are not a coincidence. The tobacco industry has long targeted queer people, taking advantage of this population's stigma-related stress and the role of bars as safe spaces in LGBTQ plus culture. Big Tobacco advertises in LGBTQ media outlets, sponsors Pride and other LGBTQ events, and host promotional events at gay bars. As in many populations, tobacco companies have used flavored products to hook LGBTQ youth, creating new customers and prolonging the epidemic of tobacco use and tobacco-related illness in the LGBTQ community. A vote to end the sale of these products is a step toward ending the harm tobacco has wreaked and is continuing to wreak on our community. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, next, we have Jesse Harding. You may begin. Jesse, are you available? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? Y yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay, I can't hear you. Um, I'll just say, first and foremost, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, Chair Kofori and Commissioners, to be able to speak to you this evening. Um, I'll just speak from the heart a little bit. Um, the When I first got um, hooked on tobacco when I was in high school, it was from Clove Cigarettes. Uh, this is in the late 90s. And I remember going to football practice uh, one of the first times after smoking and um, coughing up uh, blood and for some reason that didn't stop me between, uh, I guess, my own hubris and social pressure. And um, frankly, the fact that I liked that, that clove flavor so much, um, I kept smoking all the way into college and then um, all the way into to Peace Corps in West Africa, where yeah, I have to know, um, I did a lot of international travel and work um, all over West Africa, um, Israel, Gaza, Turkey, Jordan, and I will say that there's, I've never experienced any sort of ubiquitous, um, one size fits all idea of what hookah is. And um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, as someone who's not from there, um, I would just be another person, I guess, speaking on behalf of folks who are of that, of those cultures. Um, anyway, as life has progressed for me, I now have a 14 year old son, uh, whose pasture was at West Sylvan and hearing the stories about uh, his experience and uh, the bathrooms full of vape smokers and the social pressures around it, uh, just the gateway that that presents for kids. Um, it, it's really intimidating. And you, as a parent, you don't really know what to do to get around that accessibility. Um, he tells me that 
people get it, the kids get it the same way they used to. They get it from their older sibling. They get it from shoulder tapping. They get it from, uh, you know, the plaid pantry down the street that it will sell it to them. And I just, um, I just don't frankly understand some of the, the rationales. You know, Mr. Polanski earlier said retailers are selling flavored tobacco products responsibly. And he misses the point. Um, selling flavored up. tobacco products is categorically irresponsible, period. And either way, at the end of the day, I think, um, I think we know that Mr. Platt oh. Pantry, will, he'll be just fine. Just and uh, I don't off. think we can say the same thing for our youth and for the next generation. Thank you. Um, and so one last try for Sh Sheila. Do you want to try to finish your testimony? You have one minute left. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think everything that I was really going to say has basically been said tonight, other than being elderly, raising children, working in the industry. If we if we banned flavored e-juice, if we ban menthol, they're going to go out and find it someplace else. It's a rite of passage to children most of the time. Uh, I think it is better having it sold in a place that you guys are doing such a good job regulating with the age of 21 with your um, inspections. And it seems to be that I really think you're going to see it flourish, and that is an age thing of experience. I think you're going to see it being sold on the streets. The kids are still going to be by the school smoking cigarettes or vaping. Uh, we need to control it, not try our way rather than end it. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Madam Chair, that is all the online public testimony that I'm seeing. Um, if you signed up online and maybe you weren't called, uh, please just send me an email um, to the communication that uh, where I sent the instructions or boardclerk at molco.us. Um, now for in-person, we have Olivia Stone, Karishma Sherpa, Chong Sullivan, and Yang Lee. You can begin when you're ready. Good evening. Um, my name is Karishma Sherpa, and um, I'm a resident of um, Multama County, and I have a business in Multama County, located in um, Shijari Chavez Boulevard on 39th. Um, I'm here today to ask you to oppose a ban of uh, flavored uh, tobacco product. Um, just about myself, like I moved to United States um, 14 years ago from Nepal um, with my sister and um, she and I, like uh, my sister's family and I live together. Uh, that's how like Asian people, they live like in a big uh, joint family. So my sister's husband, my sister, me and my husband, we started a small business together um, five years ago at a convenience store. And we have been working in convenience store for almost 10 years. And today I'm here uh, to request you to uh, not like stop uh, the ban of um, uh, cigarette, like I mean tobacco flavored cigarette. Retailers like me are the first line of defense when it comes to, the, to preventing kids from purchasing tobacco product. We take this responsibility very seriously. I have 11 years old son and I take him to my business and it's my responsibility to teach my son what um, like difference between a Sour Patch Kids and a difference between a flavored tobacco. My 11-year-old uh, and my six-year-old knows the difference between the uh, candy aisle and you know the tobacco aisle. They know how poisonous uh, tobacco can be. So I feel that it's the uh, parents' responsibility to uh, teach kids uh, what is right and what is wrong, and uh, like. You know, th this ban could push the sales of uh, product to the illegal market and criminals who don't care about checking ID. We are very, uh, we ID all the time and everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, uh, County Chair Deborah Coffrey and County Commissioners. 
um, just here to assure and uh, uh, emphasize what my colleague uh, Chris Kim said Could you earlier. Your name for the record, please. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Chong Sullivan. I'm the president of uh, Oregon Kegro, the Korean American Grocer Association. I'm here today on behalf of our uh, over 180 Korean American grocery business owners members to ask you to oppose uh, Multnomah County proposed flavor tobacco ban. The proposed flavor tobacco ban will be devastating to our members, many of them who uh, already been hit hard by COVID pandemic. Our members believe in American dream and work tirelessly day in, day in and day out. This proposed ban uh, direct business away from Kegro mem members store to illegal sellers who don't follow uh, the law and check ID. This will be devastating to the uh, community and our members. If Multnomah County moves forward with this ban, our members will not only see a dramatic decrease in legal sales in tobacco, but we uh, also lose additional sales on things like gas, milk, and other food, uh, food items. Our stores are essential business, and if flavored tobacco sales are removed from a picture in Multnomah County, many stores will be forced to close their doors. Our members have a high compliance in selling tobacco to adult uh, 21 and older and take our responsibility to check ID very seriously. We ask to, uh, to the commissioners to focus on working with the law evading store owners to strengthen their licensing system and improve enforcement. We know Multnomah County has better options. Options We support enforcement, education, cessation, support, and underage prevention. Please oppose this proposal and continue to work with uh, essential business in Multnomah County to ensure tobacco is sold only to the uh, adult customers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice timing. <laughs> Hello, commissioners. Uh, my name is Olivia Stone. I am a resident of Washington County, Beaverton, and I work here in Multnomah County and have many friends and family members who live in Multnomah County, too. I'm here because I am worried about nicotine addiction becoming commonplace among young people, and I believe that flavored tobacco products are behind it. I believe we should end the sale of all flavored tobacco products in all locations with no exemptions or excep exceptions to protect the health of our community's kids and to protect them especially from becoming what the tobacco industry calls replacement customers to replace those who die from using their tobacco products every year. Um, the Oregon Health Authority reported in 2019 that one in six retailers sold tobacco products illegally to youth under 21 years old, and the rate was even higher for flavored tobacco products. I think it's one in five sold e-cigarettes illegally and one in four sold flavored cigars illegally to kids. And we all know what my t-shirt says, flavors do hook kids. Over 300 localities in states like Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Georgia, and California have restricted the sale of tobacco products. And it's a no-brainer for Loma County to join them by ending the sale of flavored tobacco products. Washington County needs Multnomah County support and leadership in this effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, this is the last in-person group, so if you think I um, haven't called you, let me know. Uh, Jacob Greer and Mustafa Abu, uh, Abu Kashim. Guess I'm first. Yep, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jacob Greer. I'm a journalist here in Portland. I've written about tobacco issues for The Atlantic, Slate, Reason, and many other publications. And I wanted to comment on the uh, sort of biased public health perspective I hear in this room, which isn't really surprising when you look around. We have a lot of people here affiliated with uh, Bloomberg-backed groups. You remember Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire sexual harasser who's put $100 million into these campaigns. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the international perspective. We've heard nothing about the Royal College of Physicians in the UK, uh, who concluded that vaping is 95% safer than smoking. Uh, we've heard nothing about Sweden, which is one of the lowest rates of smoking-related uh, illnesses in the world, because not because of prohibition or uh, abstinence, but because they switch to safer products. Uh, we haven't heard anything about the Cochrane Review from last week, which found that e-cigarettes are more effective than any kind of chewing gum or patch at helping smokers quit. Uh, we also haven't heard about youth smoking rates in the United States, which during the vaping era have cratered to nearly zero, down about 1%, almost two. Uh, on a personal note, uh, I'd also like to mention that I had a family member uh, very close to me die this two years ago from smoking-related cancer. 
And one of his biggest regrets was his inability to quit. And um, so I think about what would have happened if vaping had been created a few decades earlier. And if he had never taken up smoking in the first place or had been able to quit, you know, if he would still be here today. And there's uh, 34 million smokers in the United States who have that same problem right now, uh, who could be helped to quit with smart policy, uh, like we see in the UK, uh, where they offer vape kits in hospitals, where they offer vape kits to poor smokers, uh, as opposed to going with this failed prohibitionist policy. Uh, lastly, I know we have some vape shop owners in the room, uh, so I'd just like to extend my appreciation to them and say thank you, uh, because for every smoker who's walked into their shops and been introduced to a safer product that could help them quit, they've done more to save smokers' lives than anything this proposal would do. Thank you. Thank you. You are up. Madam Chair, Commissioners, good, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Eugene Rashad. I'm a member of Monoma County. There's been a lot of soliloquy and a lot of discussions. I understand the commercial perspective, the retail perspective, the cultural perspective. <clears throat> I understand the recreational perspective as well. And it's not a debate. People are going to do what they're going to do. The sad thing about it is that we live in a society of acceleration. There's no time to really deliberate effectively and come up with a plan that everybody can live with. We're talking about flavored tobaccos. We're talking about tobacco in a, in a larger sense, in a larger context. Let me be real, real brief here. My mother is from Shreveport, Louisiana. And when we used to get sick, she used to give us castor oil and she would flavor it with lemon and maybe soda pop sometimes because it worked for our flus and colds. See where I'm going? Let's think about it for a minute. We are a society of impatience. We don't take time to deliberate effectively and think about the health of our community at large. We're more interested in looking at what we want right now because immediacy and expendency matters. But at the end of the day, and is what's demonstrated here, we've been on this road before. We've been in this space before, and the bigger question is, are we talking about the health of our community, or are we willing to barter the health of our community for something else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, that is all the public testimony we have today. All right, last call. Is there anybody who feels that they, after listening to that, want to add their voice to our conversation tonight? Well, I want to thank all of you for coming. I want to thank you very much for um, listening to uh, your fellow um, members of Multnomah County. And just to remind folks that we will be having our first reading of this ordinance on Thursday, December 1st during the regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, which begins at 9.30 a.m. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and have a good evening. We're adjourned. <laughs>